I'm Richard Saruti, <laughs> Chadute. <laughs> uh, live in Harbison Canyon. I've been here uh, 10 years. My plans was when I was going to go to Alaska. I hung around with a bunch of hunting guys, uh, Billy Huggett. In the, in the annual, you notice that it's uh, under my ambitions for the future is blank. It's not that I didn't have any ambitions. I actually ditched that day <laughs> 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 to go hunting. <laughs> I did a lot of different, different jobs. Then, just by accident, being in the right place at the right time, I, uh, I read an article in the, in the newspaper about a fossil whale being excavated um, in Balboa Park by the Museum of Natural History. My mother used to take us camping up in the mountains. My brother and I would walk around and notice the rocks with the big Bortero holes. And now and then we would pick up an arrowhead, even though it was a no-no even back in the 50s. We made a little collection and we brought it to one of the park rangers up in the Cuyamacas and gave it to him and hoped that they would put it in the museum up in Upper Green Valley where the museum burned down in the big fire. My, I started realizing that, that archaeology and paleontology was basically an outside profession and it was something that really started driving. Now by this time I was already in my 40s, you know, getting older, already had a, a couple kids to raise too. I wrote a letter to the director of the paleontology department at the Natural History Museum. His name was Dr. Fred Schramm, and told him about myself and told him that I did have fossils that the museum might be interested in. So they contacted me. I brought the, the material down or the fossils down to the museum and they really got excited and I ended up donating some of the, the important ones that the museum wanted, and I started working as a volunteer. So this is 1980s. And I found localities that the museum did not know about. These were fossil localities. And um, a year into basically a volunteering with them, I was offered a position, a job basically. The position was to go out and monitor one of the big housing development projects that were in what we call fossiliferous rock units. It means that they're like sedimentary rocks that have a potential of high potential of fossils being found. And there was a 420-acre development in uh, Rice Canyon area right off East H Street. And it was known as Fossil Canyon. I actually had collections that I made in that canyon. Our museum at uh, San Diego Natural History Museum had collections. Los Angeles County Museum had collections. And even Berkeley had collections. <clears throat> the word paleo is old, ontology is study of. And it's, uh, people get it confused with archaeology. Archaeology is basically archaic, also means ancient or old study of, but it's dealing, arche well, archaeology deals with, with, with culture, deals with civilization, deals with history in, in a sense of being connected with, with um, humans. Now, paleontology deals with any trace of any life on, the, on this planet. It could be a dinosaur. It could be a worm. <laughs> It could be a worm that actually digs through the, the mud. <clears throat> Time goes by and it only leaves a trace, we call trace fossil, or trackways of dinosaurs, or plants. Any trace of, of life on this earth, basically not related with humans. Our museum, by the way, the Natural History Museum, is one of the oldest museum institutions on, on, in, in the western part of the United States. City of Chula Vista required that a full-time paleontologist would be on site. I did not have any, any degree in paleontology. I went back to school and got a little bit at Northern Arizona University, but mainly museumology and doing preparation and this and that kind of work. 
So I was nominated to go out there and watch these heavy equipment, such bulldozers, digging up the ground. And any time I'd find a fossil, I'd put a flag on it and salvage it. Within months in the project, we started with a, finding a lot of fossils. One day, while they were grading, they, they dug up a concreted shell bed. In other words, these, we were dealing with marine deposits that San Diego was once one big, huge, ancient embayment. It was probably similar to Monterey Bay. It was an open embayment. It wasn't closed like the San Diego Bay today with, this, with the Silver Strand. Coronado Island is not an island. It's just connected to a sand spit. And on the floor of this embayment, you, know, you have incur currents that would, would uh, create big rills in the floor of the bay, like even our, our bay today. And everything laying on the floor of, of the, the bay could get pulled into these, basically they're like traps. There's so much white shell, bones and everything. And over time, that any white shell, which is a calcium carbonate, can start dissolving into basically a concrete. So they would concrete these shell beds together and they would uh, dig them up, then take them into their fill where they would fill canyons for level. The plan is to take the hills and make them as flat as they can where they can get as many houses as they can on them. And one day they dug up a concreted shell bed that was 16 feet long, uh, 12 feet wide, and more than 5 feet thick. It was a huge block of, of basically fossils. We decided that this was so spectacular that in, instead of taking it and trying to break it up and bury it, is that it could be saved. The plan was is to maybe haul it down and put it in the front of the Museum of Natural History. The museum liked the idea, the Balboa Park people liked the idea, but the problem was is to to truck it down there and be able to get the equipment to truck it down there. The developer and the equipment operators or the people that was the grading contractors did not want to go out and get that big of machinery. They'd have to get a crane to lift it on a truck. So basically what the plan was to keep it on site into a future park space or school space. And the development did have a park uh, site laid aside, and they also had, a, had an elementary school laid aside. So we decided that the best bet would be is to put it on the elementary school site. So they took a D9 bulldozer, um, and as they were moving it, basically it broke in half. So instead of being 16 feet wide, it was half that. They pushed it up to the, to the elementary school site, and it sat on that property for over 10 years before the school was built. <laughs> and I would go back there from time to time and basically put signs on it stating that this was going to be, you know, a, uh, an exhibit or a paleontological display for the school to leave it, not to touch it. People would come out there with rock hammers and start taking fossils out of it. But it was so big that you could chip on that for a couple hundred years. <laughs> and they estimated it went 32 tons. So it sits at Clearview Elementary School on Hidden Vista Drive right off East H Street. Uh, they even have a plaque on it talking about the history on it. And uh, it was really cool. I'm really proud of that. I go by there and pet it now and then. And I... Looking at it, I could see uh, there's whale bones that are in it. Uh, there's just every imaginable kind of, uh, of invertebrate that's in it.